بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه وله ما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته قال الله سبحانه سبحانه وتعالى بعد عوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إنما مثل الحياة الدنيا كما إن أنزلناه من السماء فاختلط به نبات الأرض مما يأكل الناس والأنعام حتى إذا أخذت الأرض زخرفها وزينت وظن أهلها أنهم قادرون عليها أتاها أمرنا ليلا أو نهارا فجعلناها حصيدا كأن لم تغنى بالأمس كذلك نفصل الآيات لقوم يتفكرون Allah Ta'ala says the example of this world of this worldly life is nothing but like rain which we have sent down from the sky that the plants of the earth may absorb uh, and from which men and livestock can eat until when the earth has taken on its adornments and is beautified and its people suppose that they have capability over it there comes to it our command by night or by day and we make it as a harvest as if it had not flourished yesterday thus do we explain in detail the sign the signs for a people who give thought so let's break this down piece by piece inshallah ta'ala the first point is what that inamal that this worldly life is like water. Let's just stop right there. Why is it like water? Well, water is the perfect analogy because anybody who's dealing with uh, farming, anybody who's ever dealt with a plant knows that if you water it too much, you're going to kill it. Water it too little, you're going to kill it. You have to give just the right amount. The right amount. And so in the same way, if this dunya is going to be compared to something, then subhanAllah, the idea of giving water to plants makes a lot of sense. Why? Because you want to enjoy this dunya in a halal way, but you don't want to go too far. You can't be completely divorced from it, but at the same time you can't give yourself to it entirely. You have to have some sort of a healthy balance in the way you enjoy and appreciate this dunya. So that's beautiful. But then more specifically, not just any water, not the water that you find in streams and rivers and ponds and lakes and so forth. No, specifically that rains down. Why the rain? Well, because when it comes to the water on this earth, somebody can build a fence around it, say this is just for me, this is, just, you know, this is exclusive, this is private, but nobody can privatize, subhanAllah, when it falls from the sky. You can't say, no, no, don't touch that drop, don't let it hit your head, that's mine. No, no, Allah subhanAllah gives it to whoever He wills, whenever He wills, and so subhanAllah, not just water, but rainwater is the perfect example. Now, then Allah says what? that the plants of the earth, they absorb it, then it produces all sorts of fruits and livestock, and subhanAllah, all the lush, different colors and textures and flavors, and subhanAllah, Allah Ta'ala produces so much for both men and livestock, and Allah Ta'ala allows it to take on its adornments and beautifies it. Now, I want you to imagine for a, for a second. Imagine a young man comes up to a, a young lady with a bouquet, a beautiful bouquet, bouquet, roses, whatever the case is, and he offers. She takes the flowers, and then she obsesses over it, completely forgetting who the young man is, just completely engrossed in the flowers themselves. And she dreams to have a long romantic relationship with these flowers. Strange, right? Now, it begins, these flowers, they begin to wither. And as the petals keep falling off and as the flowers are dying, she's thinking of new ways to maybe water it differently or give it different sunlight or nurture it to make sure it stays as long as possible meanwhile the young man is thinking is she crazy what's going on here this doesn't make any sense now why do i mention this because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us this dunya as a tiny sample as a tiny sample just to give us a small fleeting taste of what he's capable of the objective isn't to make us obsessed over this world this temporary blessing this dunya we're supposed to fall in love with the blesser not with the blessing. We're supposed to fall in love with the one who gave it to us, this temporary gift. That's the point of, you know, giving the flowers. It's something nice, but think about the one who gave it to you. Don't just obsess over these temporary flowers that are going to wither away, obviously. So, just like the young man wanted to what? Develop a relationship with this young woman. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is inviting us to a relationship with him. And this is proven by and highlighted by the next ayah. The very next ayah after this, Allah ta'ala says what? Wallahu yad'u ila dar salam Allahu Akbar. Allah says, Allah is calling to the eternal abode of peace. I'm inviting you. I'm trying to create a relationship with you. Don't become obsessed with the dunya. Recognize who is the one who created it and made it and how much more he can give you. And then the people what? But unfortunately, the people start to think what? That, oh, I am capable. I made a little bit of money. Now I am the master of the universe. I control everything. Subhanallah. This happens when people become efficient at harvesting, they start to think that they can control everything, they have a little bit of power, it gets to their head. The Prophet told us what? Please pay attention to this hadith, authentic hadith. 
إِنَّ لِكُلِّ أُمَّةٍ فِتْنَةً وَفِتْنَةُ أُمَّةِ المال. This hadith, Prophet tells us what? Authentic. Indeed, every ummah has a fitna, and the fitna, the trial, the test, the tribulation, the difficulty of my ummah is what? Money, cash. Watch out. Why? Because the moment you start to make a little bit, you think, you're a big shot now. Look at me. So subhanAllah, don't let the dunya, don't let this, this blessing become a curse. Don't let this blessing become a curse by letting it get to your head and making you arrogant and making you think that you run the world. The world was running just fine before you, and the world will continue running just fine after you. The world doesn't need me or any, any of us, subhanAllah. And so yes, we have to remember that we are a guest in this hotel. Just because you stay as a, go a guest in a hotel for a while and you start to think, I own the building, you're delusional. You're a guest in this house. You're a guest in this hotel. Don't start thinking that you own the place. Na'udhu billah. Then Allah says what? Why? Because what's going to eventually happen? Ataha amruna. Our affair. Our command is going to happen. What? Laylan aw naharan. Any day. Any night. Either catastrophe can strike or your life can be taken. You're going to have to leave sometime. SubhanAllah. Why does Allah Ta'ala mention day or night? One reason, Wallahu Ta'ala Adam, because this death or this disaster, it's not necessarily going to unravel itself in different portions. The announcing itself day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year, slowly. No, no. Sometimes it just shows up in one single day, one single night, unannounced. SubhanAllah. Then Allah says what? فَجَعَلْنَاهَا حَصِيدًا كَأَلَّمْ تَغْنَا بِالْأَمْسِ And we make it as a harvest as if it had not flourished yesterday. All those fruits and everything you were building up from the rain, all goes away. SubhanAllah. What is the lesson here? Please pay attention to this. A fruit grows ripe. You, let's say you go to your garden, you see this beautiful fruit, it's nice and ripe, it's ready, it's nutritious, it's delicious, it's ready to be eaten. And you have a choice. Your choice is what? Either eat it and benefit, or you can leave it and hope that it's still going to be ripe tomorrow. How many days can you do that in a row for? How many, how many days can you say, you know what, maybe tomorrow? You know what, maybe the next day. SubhanAllah. If you procrastinate enough at the sweep, if you keep on pushing it off, if you keep procrastinating enough, what's going to happen? It's going to rot, and you'll miss your shot and the window of opportunity will close and you'll have nothing but regret. So, the question you all have to ask yourself is, what is important to you? Whatever it is, prioritize it and strike while the iron is hot. One of the greatest delusions that we have is what? Thinking that we're going to live forever. There's a window of opportunity for everything. High school, you had a window of opportunity and then it's over. College, same thing. Marriage, same thing. Children, same thing. Windows of opportunity. And Allah Ta'ala trains us to think this way. How? Every single salah, fajr, window of opportunity. Zuhr, asr, maghrib, isha, windows of opportunity. Month of Ramadan, and upcoming really soon, what? Last 10 nights, window of opportunity. Grab the fruit while it's ripe. If you don't, it'll rot. You'll miss your opportunity. Subhanallah. And then, of course, once we move on from this planet, you won't care about it. As if it wasn't, didn't even exist. As if it wasn't even there. You won't be wondering, once you pass away, who's winning in the elections? You're not going to care about things like that. What's the stock mar market? How's it going? You won't care once you've passed on. What's trending online? These things won't matter. None of it will matter to you. And then Allah Ta'ala says, final point, inshallah Ta'ala, Allah says what? كَذَلِكَ نُفَصِّلُ الْآيَاتِ لِقَوْمٍ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ Thus do we explain in detail the signs for people who give thought. What is the final point that I'd like to mention? SubhanAllah. This ayah is explaining some one very simple fact. If this doesn't resonate with you, if this ayah, if this point, if this whole concept, if it doesn't resonate with you, then you cannot be a person of deep thought. You cannot be min ahl tafakkur. You cannot be from the people of tafakkur. If this does not resonate with you. So, you must be a shallow-minded person if you don't let these things occupy your mind. So may Allah subhanahu wa make us people of deep thought. Ameen ya rabbil alameen. Jamal al-khairan wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.